Hello everyone and welcome to the Circuit Python Weekly for May 23rd, 2022. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things Circuit Python. I'm Katni and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on Circuit Python. Circuit Python is a version of uh, Python that's designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support them and, and CircuitPython, please consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. The meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text chat and the CircuitPython voice channel. If uh, this meeting typically happens on Mondays, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with U.S. holiday, which it does do next week. In the notes doc, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about the upcoming meetings via Discord. If you'd like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There is a notes document to accompany the meeting and recording. The notes doc contains timestamps to go along with the video so you can use the doc to view only the parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 30 to 90 minutes, so this gives you the opportunity to skip around. After each meeting, we post a link to the next meeting's notes document in the CircuitPython dev channel and the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages to find the latest notes doc so you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can leave hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. This meeting is held in five parts. The first part is community news, which is a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It is a preview of our Python on microcontrollers newsletter. The second part, the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka, is a statistical overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers, separate from what we're all up to. The third part is Hug Reports, which is an opportunity to highlight the good thing folks are doing and taking the time to recognize awesome folks in our community. Uh, next section would be Status Updates. Status Updates is an opportunity to sync up on what we've all been up to. Take a couple minutes and talk about what you've been doing since the last in the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be up to over the next week until the next meeting. And finally, finally, the um, last part is in the weeds. In the weeds is an opportunity for more long form discussions. These discussions can come out of status updates or be something you've identified as ahead of time is too long for status updates. And that is how the meeting will go. So with that, I will get started with community news. Uh, First up, there are now over 300 CircuitPython compatible microcontroller boards. There are now over 300 microcontroller boards that support CircuitPython. They include boards from many manufacturers, and these are boards from the community, companies that are not Adafruit, and entirely new businesses, makers, using and shipping boards with CircuitPython. Support chi supported chips include Espressif, Microchip SAMD, Nordic, NXP, RP2040, ST, and more. From Wi-Fi to BLE to LoRa, there is an easy way, easy and fun way to program microcontrollers with CircuitPython, and there is a link to the blog. Next up, Ann Barilla on Tom's Hardware PyCast. Check out the article on Tom's Hardware. Tom's, Tom's will host your editor, Ann Barilla, on the PyCast video, Tuesday, May 24th at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, check out the Adafruit blog for more information there. Uh, MicroPython surpasses original GitHub sponsorship target. MicroPython has been using GitHub sponsorship to raise funds for development. With over 100 donors, they fell short of 5,000 a month. Adafruit has already been a sponsor since corporate sponsors were added, and they promoted this worthwhile effort to other MicroPython users. The effort recently surpassed the 5K mark, and MicroPython has increased the target to 10K a month to hire an additional developer. Are you a user of MicroPython or CircuitPython, which is a MicroPython derivative? Please consider sponsoring some of your money per month. And there's a link to GitHub. CircuitPython 7.3.0 release candidate released. Uh, CircuitPython 7.3.0 um, RC2, the third release candidate of 7.3.0 was released. It's considered stable and is available as a release candidate for testing before the final release. There's a link to the Adafruit blog, and if you were playing along in the CircuitPython channel, I believe you will see that the new tag 730 has been created. So we are on our way to 730 final. So this has been the CircuitPython weekly newsletter um, preview. 
Uh, it is a Circuit Python community run newsletter emailed every Tuesday. The complete archives are available at adafruitdaily.com slash category slash Circuit Python. It highlights the latest Python on hardware related news from around the web, including Circuit Python, Python, and MicroPython developments. You can contribute your own projects and ideas in multiple ways, including making a PR on GitHub. Um, you can also tag a tweet with Circuit Python on Twitter or email cpnews at adafruit.com. And that has been community news. Next up, the state of Circuit Python, the libraries, and Blinka. So this is an overview of the entire project by the numbers. And first, we will look at an overview of the entire project. And then we'll discuss um, the core, the libraries, and Blinka separately with more detail uh, for those individual bits. So first up, overall, we had 36 pull requests merged from 20 authors. Some names I don't recognize, which again is always different than anyone else's names they don't recognize. Um, Dahan Zemin, uh, Cthulhu Hoops, uh, HDR, Paulus KPT, uh, Sabadon32, and Coplate, I believe, are the ones that are new to me. Um, and 11 different reviewers. I don't see any um, super brand new names there, but thanks to all of our reviewers, uh, we can't do things without authors and we can't promote authors without reviewers. Uh, in terms of issues, we had 30 issues closed by 13 people and 12 opened by nine people, which is excellent. We'll get to see who's responsible for the most drop in issues. Uh, and with that, um, I will turn it over to Scott to talk about the core. Hello, thank you, Katni. Um, okay, numbers for the core, we had eight pull requests merged from seven different authors so thank you to all the authors um Han Zemin I think is new along with Fabif. Uh, Fabif has done a lot of work on circuitpython.org so it's great to see them doing core work as well um, and we have four reviewers so thank you to all of our reviewers we have 18 open pull requests with a number of those or three of those are over 100 days old two of those are over 200 days old so we should definitely look at those and then a lot of younger ones as well, which I think we've probably merged since these stats were pulled. Um, with the tag for 7.3.0, or we, we tagged main as 8.0 as well. So some of these pull requests were waiting for 8.0, and so we should be able to get those in too. Uh, Issues-wise in the core, we had six, six closed issues by four people, five open by five. So we're net down one for a total of 511 open issues. Um, we've got... Uh, seven active milestones, 72x and 730 are both uh, zero open issues. That's why 730 was just tagged. Um, we'll probably get uh, some 73x issues, which we should make that milestone for. Um, would not be surprised if uh, we get a lot more uh, testing done on stable releases, so we may we may find something. We'll see. And uh, we have 34 open issues for 7xx, so we should probably make that 8xx as well. Um, and we have a bunch of 8.0 issues, well, we have 12 8.0 issues that we can now uh, also actually fix and close so that we can, uh, now that we're marked main as 8.0. Um, so that's the status for the core. Thanks, Scott. Next no up, I will talk about the libraries. So this applies to all of the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, which is everything that starts with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, as well as a few extras, such as our cookie cutter and the community bundle. Uh, we had 25 pull requests merged across all of those repositories uh, by 15 authors. Looks like I called most of the names that have been uh, tagged here as possibly new, um, and nine different reviewers. Uh, the oldest pull requests merged were uh, 12 and 13 days, which is good to see. Um, and most of them were one or zero days old, which is also great to see because it means we're keeping up with things. And that leaves us with 23 open pull requests across all of the libraries, which is pretty amazing. There's 350 of them or something to that effect. Um, in terms of issues, good to see here, 23 closed issues by nine people and five opened by five people. Um, I'm also glad that we're having so much involvement from separate people because all the new issues are from different people, which is great. Uh, leaving us with 639 open issues. 188 of those are good first issues. If you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, check out circuitpython.org contributing. You'll find all of this information and more 
If you're interested in reviewing, check out the open PRs. If you're interested in contributing code or documentation, check out the open issues. If you're new to everything, good first issue is a great place to start. Uh, we have a guide on contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub, and we also um, are available on Discord to help you out. We want to make sure you can contribute in a way that works for you. In terms of library updates in the last seven days, there were no new libraries, but there is a list of updated libraries available in the notes document. And that's what I've got there. So next I will turn it over to Melissa to talk about Blinka. Hello, uh, Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython uh, and uh, res or single board computers like the Raspberry Pi. And uh, this week we had uh, three pull requests merged by two authors and one reviewer. Uh, there are currently four open pull requests. And there was one closed issue by one person and two open by two people, leaving a net of 79 open issues. There were 9,249 Pi Wheels downloads in the last month. And we are currently at 88 boards that we support. And that's Great. it. Thanks, Melissa. And that is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. Next up is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is an opportunity for us to call out folks for doing great things, uh, highlight the amazing things going on in our community um, by our community members. I will start and then we'll go down the list in the notes document. So first up, um, I have a hug report for Deshipu for coming up with a bunch of ideas for library issues um, for the library file types guide page. By issues, I mean um, thing, problems that, that folks might run into when working with the libraries uh, in terms of or relative to the, the file types and so on and how to how to deal with those. I came up with one uh, and was kind of blocked on that and Deshipu came up with another six or seven, I think. So that was really great. Um, also, Naradoc jumped in uh, to help and provide further ideas for the same guide page. So that was greatly appreciated. Thanks to DNH for proofing the same page for me for content. Um, I was genuinely surprised that he only came back with six things and at least three of them were just missing words because um, it's a very long page and there's a lot of content to it. And I learned all of it to write the page or most of it anyway, to write the page. So. Um, Anyway, thanks for doing that, and uh, I didn't really get a chance to make a list beyond this, so group hug to everyone else. Next up is Dan. Yeah, thanks, Kathy. Um, I, thanks to Thomas F. and Kurt E., who were noticing problems with busio.uart about whether it returns none or em the empty byte string. Um, we've got to fix that in the long run. Um, thanks to Naradoc for looking at the issue about the third argument mysterious third argument to int dot from bytes uh we have some we have something we should fix there too and thanks to scott for reviews for the uh upcoming or now done release and for uh, version planning discussions where originally last week we said we weren't sure whether we would go to 80 but it's clear that we are so that will, that's what we did and um that was a very helpful discussion okay thank you all right <laughs> Next up, I have notes from David Glauda, who says, group hug, sorry, I have not been following this week. And next up is Foamy Guy. All right, thanks, Katni. Um, hug reports this week. Thank you to C. Grover, uh, who tracked down uh, and figured out the root cause of an issue with the Pi Portal Titano uh, brightness. Um, thank you to Nerdoc, uh, who has done some work to free up some space in some of the, the most tight uh, Circuit Playground builds. And uh, thank you to Tectric um, for improving the typing library with more protocols that we can use uh, throughout the libraries. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you. Next up is Maker Melissa. I wanted to give a hug to Dan for your help with figuring out the seven segment display pull up issue. A uh, hug to Tectric for helping with a user with adding grayscale support to the UC8151D display I.O. driver. Uh, another hug to Tectric and Femi Guy for helping maintain the Blinka display I.O. repo. To Anne for your helpful reviews of guides and a uh, group hug to everyone else. Excellent. Next up is Tammy. 
Oops. All right. Hi, everybody. Um, I have hugs for Katni for hosting, for Dan, and for everybody who's working on the releases. And then a group hug because I'm getting what my boss called a soft promotion at my new job in the next couple of weeks. And my involvement with CircuitPython and the community has really helped me to improve and level up some of the technical skills that made that happen. That's all I got. Excellent. Congratulations. Thanks. All right. Next up is Scott. Hello. Uh, for me, uh, thanks to Dan for all the re all of the releasing. Um, thanks to Deshipu for thinking about graphs with me. Um, graphs in terms of networks, not uh, charts. And th hugs to Lady Ada for continuing to guide Adafruit and CircuitPython through the chip shortage. Um, it's tough. <laughs> it's really tough. And uh, she's she's working really hard to make sure that uh, we're going the right direction and with the things that we can get. And then last up, uh, Jerry mentioned this uh, last week that he's going to be less involved, but I just wanted to say publicly a huge thank you to Jerry um, for all of his help with both CircuitPython, the code and testing, and also the community over the years. Um, CircuitPython started in 2016 is when I started working on it. You know, it evolved out of MicroPython, of course. Um, and then, you know, 2017 was really a formative year. That's when Katni came on board and Dan was here and Jerry was one of those folks too. So uh, Dishibu, I think, is another long-term person. But just a huge, uh, huge, huge thank you to uh, Jerry again for really being our testing crew and being so helpful with folks. Um, it's been a... We wouldn't be where we are without uh, Jerry's help. So I uh, just wanted to do another hug report, even though he may not get it, uh, but just want folks to know. Uh, and that's it for me um, for now. I agree entirely. Thank you, Jerry. Um, I have some notes from Tectric to wrap us up. Uh, so hug report to Naradoc for pointing out an issue with the type annotations. To Foamy Guy for quickly patching the majority of those libraries. To Dan H for helping me pick a solution regarding F strings in a PR in the Whiskey library, and a group hug. And that wraps up hug reports. So next up is status updates. This is an opportunity for us to sync up on what we've been up to since the last meeting and what we're going to be up to until the next meeting. Uh, I will start uh, and then we'll go through the list the same way that we did for hug reports. Um, again, if you're, if you're text only, make a note and I'll read things off. Um, etc. So I'll get started. Um, last week, published a new page in the Welcome to Circuit Python guide, the library file types and frozen files page. Um, or frozen libraries, I don't remember now. Um, this is a very important page. We answer the questions that this page details the answers to. Like we get asked those questions constantly. And it's it's important information, understanding the difference between an MPy file, a Py file, and a, and a frozen library, how they work, how they interact, how you can override them for testing purposes. How do you create your own MPy file if, you know, something doesn't fit otherwise, et cetera. And it's, it's all in a guide page now. Um, so if you are troubleshooting with someone or get asked that question, you now have a guide page to point folks to. It's in the Welcome to Circuit Python guide, so it will be easy to find. It's under Advanced Setup, um, and it's just it's got a lot of great information um, about all of that. I learned quite a lot writing the guide page, and um, those who have who have read it are are real excited about it. So just be aware of that you you no longer have to regurgitate that information. Um, I also, along with that, added a new section to the CircuitPython libraries page in the welcome guide about the Adafruit project bundle because we never actually updated the guide to mention it. And I wanted to explain how the project bundle worked with frozen libraries. So I needed to write up a small section in another page that said what the, what the project bundle even was. Um, and then I continued testing PyLeap and I started a PyLeap uh, guide on how to add a project to PyLeap. So this week I'll be updating the Feather v2 guide to instruct to install the WHCX driver. Um, there's a chip on the board that is going to be possibly replaced or added to um, that requires a separate driver. So that will be 
add it in there to just say just install it anyway because you're going to run into it soon the cutie pie pico guide uh, continue working on the pilot project guide um, i'm going to be creating a repo for the i squared c addresses guide we're going to move the content of the guide from the learn system to markdown files on github and then embed those files and then tell people to make PRs to add new I squared C addresses instead of just leaving feedback and expecting um, expecting us to go through all the feedback and just add it manually. Like it, it's always some kind of bonkers chip we've never heard of. And instead now folks can add their own stuff. Um, I will be talking to a couple of people on uh, whether or not they're interested in doing the actual move to Markdown. Um, and then I'm going to be doing a fancy GitHub profile guide. Uh, Phil found a tool that uses Markdown to make your GitHub profile kind of fancy. Um, and I'll be writing a guide on, on doing that. And then finally, um, the next guide on my list is the a GitHub action status alert guide with a um, tower light that is uh, red, yellow, and green. Um, and it'll reflect what your action status is on a particular repository. So we'll start with CircuitPython, but um, you can obviously modify it to any repository you want. And that is what's going on with me. So next up is Dan. OK, thanks. Um, so last week, I released 730RC1 with two significant uh, bug fixes. And then uh, over the weekend, I did 730RC2. Uh, as an experiment, I turned on F strings on all the builds, including the tiny ones, and it worked except for one obscure board, which I fixed. So um, the 730 release is in process. I tagged it, as you saw, in GitHub, and it'll take a few hours before the builds catch up, but there should be a release by uh, this evening. Um, so that's, that's great. Um, that's all I can say. It's been a it's been a it's been a long process, <laughs> and we're happy to move on to eight. Now I'm sure there'll be seven three fixes also. Um, I did some work on um, trying to regularize all of the error messages, and also doing some internal tricks to use what were called validation routines that check to see like is an integer in range and things like that instead of doing that check by manually, so to speak, in the code. And so I was able to save a bunch of space on all builds by doing that. Um, and that'll be in, in the 8.0.0, start in the 8.0.0 uh, builds. Um, and then finally, I'm working on debugging some uh, network code. Uh, there are some problems with chunked responses uh, when used with Adafruit ESP32 SPI. And I'm just starting to work on that. I have print statements that show the problem. I don't know what's going on yet. OK. All right. Thanks, Dan. Next up, I have some notes from David Glauda. Uh, today, running CP natively on BBQ20KBD, which is there's a link to it uh, from Solder Party. Um, with RP2040 stamp firmware, REPL is working. Scanning the internal and external I squared C bus is working. Future, scan the keyboard, PWM the backlight, and figure out the mouse, maybe I squared C, 0x33 address. And next up is Foamy Guy. All right, thanks. Um, last week, I tested out a couple of changes in the Circuit Playground library, as well as some tweaks in the core to change the way that that gets frozen in uh, to try to save up some space on those builds. Um, I Let's see, I uh, made a tweak in the core to the initialization of the display uh, backlight uh, PWM. Um, there was an issue on the Titano, and it turned out that changing the frequency on that PWM uh, was the fix. Um, I fixed a few instances uh, where typing imports uh, wouldn't work on Python 3.7 specifically uh, across a couple of the libraries. Um, and then this week, uh, this morning, I tested out uh, ESP32 S2, um, making requests from a Node.js server uh, over and over again to see if it would have any trouble over time. Um, uh, some other stuff I want to do this week is um, look into WebSockets capabilities with CircuitPython. I think Neradoc has an example project out there, so I'll probably dive into that this week. 
Um, and then uh, the other thing I have is to fill in some uh, high-level details about CIRCUP on the library's uh, learn guide page. Um, turn her over to the other guide and um, just mention what it does and why it's helpful. Um, so that's what I got. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Next up is Melissa. Hello. Let's see here. Um, last week, I finished writing the 2.7 inch e-ink guide. Um, and that came in helpful uh, with a support question I had over the weekend. I went through guide feedback for a number of guides that I had made significant contributions to, but were under other authors' names. And I worked on adding new feathers and feather wings to the guide that provides uh, an overview of everything available. And this week, I'm going to finish updating that guide and then catch up on some GitHub repos I haven't worked on in a while. And that's it. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Next up is Tammy. All right. So unfortunately, this week, um, this past week, I didn't work on anything with CircuitPython. I had a bunch of work stuff going on and also um, dealing with a personal emergency, my air conditioner dying in the middle of a 100 degree week here in Phoenix, which wasn't super fun. Um, so this week, I'm hoping to get back to my card deck library, doing some more CircuitPython PR reviews, and again, trying to figure out a consistent streaming schedule that I can manage consistently, and hoping to make progress on at least one of those this week. Excellent. Uh, next up is Scott. Hello. Um, so last week I wrapped up the NTP changes. Uh, the .env PR is out, but it was having code size issues. I also th broke the 64-bit build was broken, so I just fixed that as well. Um, so I just merged in main. Uh, thanks to Dan's op message optimization pass, I'm hoping <laughs> it's enough file savings for me to squeeze in there, uh, of course. Um, Last week, I also started exploring analysis of code size. So one thing we do when we build all of our builds um, is that we split data and functions into their own sections. And sections are kind of like the unit that the linker decides to keep code or throw it away. Um, so we have this we we have this f function sections feature, and then we have gc sections, which is what deletes them. Um, and so I'm working on determining how all of our sections in CircuitPython are related and hoping to find um, kind of dependencies between sections that we don't actually need so we can like potentially get a bunch of space back if we optimize things. So I'm playing around with that. Um, I made a repo with the Python file that takes a map file and, and figures all that out. So I'm going to work on that. I also started auto connect to Wi-Fi based on the environment variables. Uh, that's kind of an extension of the .env work. Um, this week, I'm going to continue the graph analysis because I think it's interesting and hopefully I can get it to a place where it's like makes it pretty easy to figure out, um, like to, to visualize all of the data that we're using. Um, in particular, there's an AI thinker board with a two megabyte uh, flash for C3 and it's already filled up, which is unfortunate. Um, and of course, web workflow is going to add more code size. So I'd like to be able to take a look at that stuff and figure out if we can't optimize our ESP builds better. And this tool will apply more broadly as well. Um, I want to get the .env PR in um, and hopefully follow it with the auto Wi-Fi one as well. However, one thing that crossed my mind is I really like, I don't have a great way of telling people like what the Wi-Fi status is. And we kind of don't just ignore this with BLE as well. But I've been thinking about for a while, um, I had thought about this originally for the Raspberry Pi, where you have like a, a screen and stuff. But um, I'm thinking about switching, you know, right now we have the blink in the top left and then the left hand column is empty for the default terminal. I'm thinking about switching us to having a status bar at the top. So the first column of characters would be a status bar, and then below that would just be uh, the scrolling output as normal. And what we could do there is we could dynamically kind of decide what goes in the leftmost spot of that um, status bar so that um, 
we can put your like IP address if you're on Bluetooth or 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 if you're on Wi-Fi or your Bluetooth status status if you're broadcasting or stuff or like kind of prioritize what to show there uh, to be most useful rather than having like four print statements in the scrolling text to, to say like oh your Wi-Fi is on your BLE is on your USB is disconnected and there's no keyboard like it'd be cool to have a, like a more concise place to put that so I think uh, for 8.0 it could be cool to rethink that status bar. And I'm happy to hear what uh, folks think of that idea, but that's what I'm playing around with. Or will be playing around with later this week. All right. Thanks, Scott. Mm -hmm. Next up, I have some notes from Tectric. Uh, last week, added more typing protocols to CircuitPython underscore typing. Helped patch a Python 3.7 compatibility issue with type annotations. Got set up with Adabot for running library patches. Submitted a PR to turn Adafruit logging into a subset of CPython's logging module. Started working on getting image transfer set up on the Bluefruit Connect library this week. Start rolling out library patches with Adabot and the post patch cleanup. Continue working on data class like library and continue working on getting the Bluefruit Connect image transfer working. And that is status updates which leads us to In the Weeds. In the Weeds is an opportunity for more long form discussions, questions, uh, anything like that that didn't really make sense for status updates. Um, if you do have a topic, please add it now uh, while we're going through the first topic. Otherwise, um, we will uh, wrap up after this is done because we uh, don't want to um, have a bunch of dead time while we're waiting for folks to uh, come up with a topic. So the first topic is from Foamy Guy, and I will turn it over to him. You are muted if you are talking. Oh, yes, thank you. Um, let's see, uh, yeah, I probably didn't hear any of that. So I put the link in the chat there. Mostly I just want to get thoughts on this um, Circuit Playground uh, library PR. I, I kind of think it's um, ready to go or ready to merge anytime we want. I know there's a, one in the core that can come later on after this one, but I just wanted to get more eyes on it to see if there were uh, parts maybe that I wasn't considering, um, just because it is definitely like a very high visibility library, obviously. Um, the only things I could think of that I don't recall seeing before on any of the rest of the libraries um, is having like code that doesn't necessarily get, uh, or doesn't need to get put at least in the MPY for the library bundle um, or the project bundles. I didn't know um... if the way that are linked would cause any trouble with those or not but. i don't think it will um okay. because it pulls from like the bundle pulls from the actual like library right and this other this other directory even though it's linked i, I don't i think it's going to be ignored ignored yeah that, so, was, that was my thought as well but while that's it because we that was actually something that comes up on the guide page i just wrote is that um the project bundle downloads every library it thinks it needs even and it doesn't know the difference between a board with frozen libraries and a board without them because it, the yeah. the project bundle is board agnostic. So yeah. I do explain in the guide like, hey, these files will be downloaded, but they won't be run because of you know the file priority that you just read about. Um, so the only reason you would need to do anything about it is if you find you're running out of disk space. You know, so as cool as it would be to get the bundle to like recognize frozen modules. Um, I think that's a whole other huge long down the road beast. Yep. Um, but I think that both of those setups are just going to ignore this other directory and, and treat everything else fine. That said, we should definitely, um, once we merge this, uh, wait for the next bundle, make sure it's right, <laughs> you okay. know, and then go to a project bundle guide that is for that is for the circuit playground and download it and see if you get everything. Okay. Sounds good. Otherwise, yes, I'm I'm ready for this to be merged. Cool. Yeah, I will um, take another peek at it this afternoon and merge it, and then uh, keep an eye tomorrow. I guess we should get a, a bundle, so I'll check on that in the morning as well. Perfect. I I was a little worried about whether. I mean, I'm not sure this should prevent it, but that um, so Windows doesn't have links in the same way as. Uh, Linux or Mac, and I think that Git treats as, tr 
tweets the links correctly, but I'm just, uh, I was a little worried if somebody was going to try to like work on this library in Windows, whether, and they submitted PR, whether they might mess up the links. But gotcha. I think we can just, I think we can just watch out for that. Okay. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. yeah. I think it, it probably shouldn't interfere with building CircuitPython on Windows, which a few people do because it doesn't matter if they're duplicated. Like, it doesn't really matter if it's a link or if it's a copy of the file because you never do anything with it. Right. So, right. But you're also not doing anything with the links, technically, I guess, right? When you're updating the library, um, they just yeah, exist. Not... But Windows might, like, bite them or something is what you're saying? No, Windows, what Windows might do is in this subdirectory, which has links in it, mm -hmm. it might convert those links into copies of the original file. Oh, so we would just have to say, please don't commit that. Yes. So we have to, we have to watch out for that. Okay. If somebody, that's basically what we have to watch out for. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Good yeah. to know. Okay. All right. Okay, great. All right. All right. Perfect. Yeah, thank you. You, you good to go on that then? Funny guy? I believe so. All right. Then with that, uh, I'm going to wrap up this meeting. So uh, this has been the CircuitPython weekly meeting for, oh my gosh, I have to go find the date, um, May 23rd, 2022. Um, this has been the time of the week that we talk about all things CircuitPython. Thank you to everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held on Tuesday, uh, May 31st. So note that next week is on Tuesday. Um, this meeting will be held or is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting or any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPythonistas role. And we hope to see you all next week. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>